Good morning, everybody. This is Grant from State of the Spark, and I am super excited to be here. It's another Monday. Thank God it's Monday. And today we got a decent small little lesson for you today. We're talking about the size of problems you need to be solving in order to impact the world. The size of problems you need to be solving in order to to impact the world. That's what we're going to be talking about this morning. But before we talk about how to do that and what I learned from an amazing French founder this morning on a call, he and I were discussing his launch this morning of an amazing company. I learned so much from him, Nas. He's, he has such insight and such vision for his company, and he has he has the appropriate size problems you need to be solving. That's what we're going to learn from a French founder this morning. But before that, you know we've got other news, news that's going to make you smarter for the day. We're going to be talking a little bit about unique digital IDs. We're going to be talking really quickly about uh, the markets because you got to pay attention to what's going on there. We're going to touch on six new frog species and then what is indigenous futurism. We're going to be touching on all of that this morning. But before we do anything, you know what time it is. Morning cup of gratitude. Start your freaking day. Start your freaking week with total gratitude, total gratefulness. And I want you to post in the comments. What are you grateful for? What's got you pumped today? What's got you completely excited? What are you most grateful for on this lovely Monday? You know I'm going to start. As I keep coming back to what I'm grateful for, let's talk about my communities. I am learning so much from my communities right now. My in real life communities, I had a great communication with James Joseph, a friend and co-founder, uh, a, a fan, uh, uh, someone that I am a fan of, uh, spoken to my life on uh, Thursday last week. And it was just so helpful in reframing some of the way I think, which I am sincerely appreciative. So I am grateful for my in real life communities with James Joseph. I'm grateful for my Web3 communities uh, as I said, I had a fantastic conversation this morning. I got the luxury of speaking with a top-tier founder who works with one of my favorite venture capital companies, AZ16, um, or A16Z, <laughs> dyslexia. Uh, fantastic founder who's been working with them. He's got a fantastic idea, which we'll touch on in a second. But the point is, is if you start surrounding yourself with the right communities, those who celebrate your thoughts, those who celebrate the work of your hands and encourage it and inform it, it becomes a powerful, empowering feedback loop. So I highly recommend you stick around because we're going to be talking about all this. And of course, if you want more information like this, the conversation is happening in our Discord. We're going to talk about our personal development. We're going to break, be breaking out subgroups there for personal interests so that we can start serving that as you grow to help accomplish the, the vision of igniting lives, of explosive significance, starting with your own and helping people basically achieve freedom. So we're going to be solving real problems in there. But go check out the Discord. Go check out the Patreon if you want to get our buy alerts and that sort of thing or just want to support the effort. But let's talk about other news in other news, what is indigenous futurism? Artist couple Jason Brown and Donna DeConte Brown are two indigenous artists that have been creating jewelry for some times. Uh, they've been creating a uh, hot couture jewelry, uh, indigenous jewelry that has been very popularized under the title DeConte and Brown. And they've had a very successful jewelry line um, as an as as in general. I was going to say as an indigenous couple, but regardless of being an indigenous couple, they have had a successful jewelry line. Now, lately, though, especially since the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of the art shows and haute couture shows uh, where their art was, where their jewelry was sold or distributed, had been canceled. And so they began making music and sharing music. They started with Wabanaki music and imagery. And started performing and started uh, expressing their artwork and basically hanging up the jewelry pliers and focusing on performance art. But with a futuristic twist, says Jason Brown, it's called indigenous futurism. Many people, including indigenous people, think of indigenous folks as something ancient or from the past, a living relic. They don't see us as current and they sure as heck don't see us as futuristic. Well, Jason and Donna Brown both thought, how can we start speaking to 
indigenous people as futurists, indigenous people as modern and current, not just blasts from the past. They've begun with video, music, dance, and fashion, and they've started to do immersive live experiences where people can experience the culture in a multifaceted way, in a curated way. They call their first show Firefly the Hybrid New Moon Performance, and you can actually get that performance on YouTube. Let me actually share the link with you. Good morning, Billy. Gratitude. Good morning, sir. Boom. There's the link to Firefly the Hybrid, a new moon performance by Jason Brown and Donna DeConte Brown as they seek to find ways to contextualize indigenous people, not just as relics of the past who have a very long lineage, but or ancestry, but people of the future. So they call it indigenous futures. And you can see it there. Let's talk about six new frog species. <clears throat> yes, scientists have discovered even more frog species. Despite global warming, despite uh, deforestation by loggers in rainforest throughout Mexico and Guatemala, they have still yet identified six new uh, tree frog species. And I say I misspoke, not tree frog, but miniature frog. Frog. The smallest of the six species is only a half of an inch long. They would fit literally on your thumbnail. They would fit on your thumbnail. Now, what you, well, one thing that's unique about these frogs is that they actually don't have a tadpole stage. In fact, these frogs are born from eggs, which caused researchers to actually start researching them further. They did further DNA tests as well as comparisons of their bone structure with other known frog species and identified that, yes, these are six new frog species. So they're so tiny. And researchers to actually identify them was like, oh, my gosh, now they're here. But they look to the left and the right of them, and there are loggers in deforestation company literally right nearby removing habitat. As they discovered these frogs, they literally watched the current known habitat for these frogs get removed, and it's currently legal. Ethical, moral, you be the judge. Technically legal. Boom. There's a link if you want to learn more about these six new frog species, I highly encourage you to check that out. And if it pricks your heart, do something about it. Check it out, read into it, share it with a friend. Let's talk about the market real quick. In the TradFi market, the traditional finance market, the Dow is in pre-market hours down 1.23%. Most people know that to be a hard down, which means in all probability, it's going to open low. That will create fear, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, what we call FUD. That will create fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which usually continues to tumble the market. If uh, The S&P 500 down 1.55%, reinforcing this downtrend. The NASDAQ down 1.89%, also 1.89%, almost 2% in pre-market. Market's going to be down pretty hard this morning. Not financial advice, but that's what it's looking like. Now, in the DeFi markets, they're not much different, actually. Bitcoin is down 3.24%, which isn't big compared to its number. Ethereum down 4.18%, uh, and Cardano down 7.37%. Now, the last time Bitcoin was at was at this current rate, uh, I don't even have the number where it's at at this moment. But right now, Bitcoin, it, it was at this same price back in July 2021. Ethereum was at this price, people forget, as recent as January uh, 26th, and Cardano. Cardano has not been at the 70 cent range since February 2021. Now, again, people might challenge me. Grant, are you expressing fear, uncertainty, and doubt of your own? And the answer is just no, my dear friends. Not in the least. In fact, if anything, I'm super pumped because I'm going to be buying in at these deep discounted rates. Cardano, Ethereum, Bitcoin, some of my absolute uh, steadfast holds, I'm absolutely going to be buying these at this rate. That means things are more affordable. I can mint my NFTs at a much more affordable rate. I can stack my uh, my investments uh, at a much more affordable rate. So I'm going to be watching for this. And some of the people speaking into these numbers in our Discord say it's going to go as low as 25, maybe lower. Billy Weigel jumps in. This type of market is going to show who has diamond hands. Did you do your research and have conviction in your positions? This is why. This is where the wealthy make their millions long term. 
So absolutely, and we're seeing this in the DeFi space, but we're also seeing this in the traditional space. I did a little bit of homework and my short position on the bond market is up nearly to a T of what the S&P 500 is down. So I'm up today almost 2% on my short position. Now, it doesn't counteract my whole portfolio. That's okay. On the rest of my portfolio, I'm going to dollar cost average in at the low. Do your homework. Do your homework and always have margin of safety from the book, Psycholo uh, the, the Psychology of Money, the chapter on margin of safety. If you just skip to that chapter, the author suggests having a third of your income put away at all times for a catastrophe. So when the market moves down like this, you have a position to go. That's what the markets are at. And that's what I'm doing today. Let's talk about last piece of other news, unique digital IDs coming from NFTs. Let's talk about it. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, uh, a lot of people think that NFTs are uh, digital card games like Pokemon in your mom's basement, but that's not the case. In fact, if you visited Twitter at all in the last six months, you might have noticed that some NFT users have a hexagon around their profile picture. And yes, this was a hat tip to those who owned an NFT. They could verify on the blockchain like they had to go to the blockchain, Twitter checked their uh, contract ID and verified, yes, this person owns this NFT and we will change the hexagon. Now that seemed kitsch and cool and nerdy and people like people showing off their NFTs is like someone wearing a fanny pack, maybe. But what people don't know is futurists like Twitter and Instagram were using this feature to experiment with identification human identification. So it started as a Twitter hexagon. And in an announcement just recently, Instagram is starting as recently as this week with, with users on Instagram being able to go to their NFTs and verify who they are or that they own the NFT at least. Now, this is very kitschy and cool for weird graphics and images that come across as NFTs. But this is speaking to a problem that these future-driven companies are paying attention to, and that is identification. A major challenge in the world is how do we actually come up with either a driver's license or a passport or a government identification that represents me with a photo and that I can verify is me? Social networks realize that they're the first persons or the first groups with the infrastructure and architecture to push forward all of the technologies required to pull together a globalized ID. The central government can't. They've been fighting crypto, cryptographic and blockchain technology forever, and they don't have a social network. In fact, if anything, a lot of the citizens are very cautious of their governments. Whereas social networks, we have uh, quite willingly given a lot of our information over the years to social networks, and social networks have realized that they are uniquely positioned to push forward the technology of centralized IDs, which the government will ultimately lease from the most reliable winner in this space. So this problem of how do we generate decentralized or unique IDs that are provable, that are not uh, fakeable? How, how can we get it so that no one has a fake ID so that we can swipe this and carry this on our person at all times? Well, of course, in, in uh, NFTs and cryptographic and blockchain technologies, it becomes readily imaginable on how that might happen. But who's actually solving this problem? It's a big problem. People have to uh, people have to begin to solve for problems like uh, actual provability. Who is this person? Are they on the blockchain? Does the photo match who they are? Does it match other parts of their metadata? It's a very difficult problem with a lot of unique angles. Well, there's a new startup called Rebels, and startup on Rebels looks at first like a video game. It's a very hot Web3 cryptographic startup. They're focusing on profile pictures, the unique profile pictures that could demand a hexagram or a hex uh, a profile picture in Twitter and now in Instagram. It looks really cool with very uh, Street Fighter 2 cyberpunk characters with unique abilities. But behind the scenes, as I talked with the founder this morning, they're actually working on very deep technology. For example, what if you could actually connect all of your other NFTs to this particular NFT? What if you could have a profile pic and in the background, this profile pic also said, hey, this person has an account on Twitter, on LinkedIn, as you chose to connect all of your other social media to your one profile pic? And what if Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, 
TikTok, or any other social network, or LinkedIn, or your employer could all hook into your universal ID. And when it loaded in the little corner over here with your profile pic, if it loaded that, it also had little data in it that someone could just click and go to your other social networks. This is what Rebel is working on behind the scenes, and they just look like a video game. If you actually want to see a very cool use case, and we're going to actually be talking a little bit about Rebels, but really about the size of problems you need to solve. The problem that Rebels is solving is blockchain-based digital identification. And how they're solving that is through gaming and art. Here's a link in the comments below if you want to actually see some of the very cool, very punk artwork being associated with Rebels by Night. Night Labs is the name of the uh, company. They're connected with venture capital firm A16Z, fantastic firm. And they're working on actually solving digital IDs. But that's a big problem, as I already discussed. And in talking to Nas, the founder, this morning, Nas was able to share with me the one thing they're focused on, the size of the problem they're focused on in order to solve the bigger problem. Let's talk about how you're probably trying to solve too many problems at once. Let's talk about today's lesson for small business owners and igniting lives of explosive significance. <clears throat> As we said, many people are trying to solve too many problems at once. When I was young and a lot of you young people out there want to conquer the world, you want to travel, you want to see everything. You want to build high-end relationships. You want to be respected. You want to be adored. You want to be loved. But you also want to solve uh, world hunger and stop the war in Ukraine from Russia. You want to achieve so many things. And these are very macro things. And at 20, you just try to do this general thing called impact the world. I know I do, and I know I still encourage young people. Igniting lives of explosive significance itself is a big vision that I've had since I was 28. How I've wanted to do that has evolved over the years, but I found for many months and many years, a lot of my energy was wasted because I was trying to work on this macro thing called igniting lives of explosive significance. It's almost too general. Impacting the world is too general. Now, if you are passionate about a macro vision, which I am, I am passionate and it means something to me to ignite lives of explosive significance, but it's a macro problem. And if I sit and think about it on a Saturday morning, a lot of other problems start to pop up. How do I help people with depression? How do I help people outside move out of their jobs? And well, that means I got to help people with freedom. If I help people with freedom, what types of freedom are there? Financial freedom, mind freedom, physical freedom, the ability to breathe and, and exercise. So fitness and health, right? Relational freedom, the ability to be surrounded with multiple enriching people that encourage you at every turning and aren't contagonists, right? Work freedom, work that is meaningful, so many other aspects start to pop up. Similarly, for people that are trying to, say, for example, solve world hunger, other thoughts come up like I have to solve for food distribution. And then now I've got to solve for water scarcity because people aren't going to leave the desert. They live in the desert. Then we need to start solving for self-sustainability. So do I work on governments and how much they consume or how much their people consume? Or do I work on the individual and stick uh, rain catchment and gutters like earth ships do I then solve for awareness? So what we find is, as someone, especially a young person or a noob, sees something that they become passionate about, they try to serve it at the macro. And I always challenge people, macroeconomics doesn't exist. And people say, what? I said, macroeconomics doesn't exist. They go, what do you mean? I said, go, go affect the NASDAQ right now. Go do it. Who actually affects the, the NASDAQ? Now, we could actually say the Federal Reserve. Well, no, they just do a single action. They, they pass laws on raising interest rates. They do a few actions. They raise interest rates. That's a very tactical action. It has nothing to do with the Mac. It doesn't directly impact the macro economy. And then they either print more money or withdraw more money from the system. And that's not direct. What then happens are millions, if not billions, of tiny actions that drive the market a certain way. There's no such thing as a macro Econ economy. There's the concept of a macro economy, and there's even tools that we deploy that we say that we can know with a good amount of certainty affect the macro economy. But the truth is, it's a million tiny actions that aggregate to the macro. So that if you have a big vision, if I have a big vision of igniting lives of explosive significance, if, if a young person has a big vision of solving for world hunger or impacting the world, there's millions of tiny actions that build up. 
And if you let yourself conceive of the amount of work necessary for you to rally those closest to you, rally a following, because these are other actions you have to do, you start to easily get overwhelmed. You start to easily create burnout. You start to easily consider quitting. I'll just quit. I'll just work at my job. I won't dream bigger. Well, there's a quote I want to encourage you uh, to use, uh, to remember at times like this. And that quote is, think global, act local. Now, we forget that in the 60s, this phrase was popularized. Think global, act local. And no one embodies this better uh, that I have met recently than I, someone I've been hyping throughout today's show, Nas from Rebels by Night. Rebels is a brand, and it's a lifestyle brand. It's a gaming brand. It's an art line. It's a PFP. In crypto, we call them PFPs, profile picks. It's a PFP line. It's a line of art used for people's profile picks so that they can identify with that. Now, Rebels, started by Nas, I asked him a specific question or I made a note. I said, hey, Nas, I've been listening to you talk for the last 20 minutes and I got to realize the technology you sound like you're sharing could solve blockchain IDs. And Nas got very excited and said, this is actually the vision of what we're working on. We're solving how to give people, the average citizen, an ability to have a verifiable, authenticated digital identification right in their phone. And if you lose your phone, you can just shut your phone off, buy a new phone, and then have access to your digital ID. He said, but the problems were too vast. Have you been trying to solve problems in your small business? Have you been trying to solve problems for meaningful significance that you were actions that you wanted to take to bring more meaning and significance into your life? Have you been trying to solve personal development problems, but it seemed too vast? Founder of Rebels by Night, Nas, said the same thing. We quickly found that there was a lot of problems, a lot of challenges to solve. And then he said this. He said, you want to solve the most tangible, immediate problem you can. You want to have a concept of the ecosystem of problems necessary to move your vision forward. Now share with me, you need to have a concept. You need to be able to understand at the macro level all the different components that do comprise the problem you're trying to solve. But when you wake up that day, you need to dial back to the simplest single action you could take, the most tangible single problem you could solve. So the question is this, and this is my challenge to you on a Monday for those who are prepping to get about your day, and I'll let you go here with this thought. You might want to build your business to the next level. You might want to be in the fittest you've ever been in your life, the fittest shape you've ever been in your life. You want to have, might have the sexiest, most alluring relationship with your spouse or partner that you've ever had. You might want a lot of these things, but if you actually sat down and thought about it, the things, it could be an overwhelming thought to actually accomplish all of those things. But if we take a solid founder's advice and the ancient advice, uh, ancient, if you will, from the 60s, the uh, think global, act local, I will encourage you, solve the most tangible not distracted. A lot of people think, well, I'm going to think of my vision and then work on something like I'll hype my project. But you haven't actually worked and solved anything. You've just hyped your project. A lot of people that we find in the discords, they're just hyping their discords. A lot of small business owners are just saying, hey, join me. I'm the best ever. And people are asking, I want to see something more tangible. Well, I haven't invented my drone lawnmower yet, but, but I'm starting small and, uh, and just get involved and invest in my company for the lawnmower. People are getting very tired of the broader stroke hype, and they want to know what tangible problem you're solving. And I'll give you a living example of this. With Spark Sites, we have a pretty broad vision, which I won't go into. And we've been pitching this vision for a long time, and we found, honestly, people are tired of it. They're tired of being pitched this broader vision. But we found, we ran an experiment last week, and then we said, what is the single most tangible solution that has a good product market fit, that seems like it's rudimentary, seems like it's simple, but it has to be a tangible solution. Well, the team rallied and we rolled out links pages for all website owners for Spark Sites and any future buyer of a Spark Site, they get a free links page. Now that sounds basic, 
Anyone can go get a Linktree page, but they have to build that and build their website. It's two things they have to manage. What I want to express to you about this experiment is, is the level of response for our clients. They were more engaged in a single week than they have been in six months. We connected with clients that we haven't connected with in over a year because we rolled out this concept, a single tangible problem we solved. And this concept is a concept we're going to be rolling out in our relationships, in our fitness, in our meaningful work. And in our wealth building, the TLE, the total life experience, fitness and health, healthy, happy relationships, work we enjoy, and spirituality. In all of these areas, we're going to be working, uh, rolling out, at least me and Marissa personally, but then also through Spark Citizens, what's the most tangible problem we can solve right now? In the case of Rebels, the most tangible thing they solved is coming up with really cool art, a really cool piece of brand, a really cool profile pit, because that's the trend right now. And there's a good product market fit. People are excited to get this art and put it on their Twitter and put it on their Instagram because they want to be affiliated with a progressive group, a, a, a technologically progressive group. So everyone wants to be in. These are the cool kids now. So everyone wants to be in. So the problem they solve is meaning and significance and art. We can do this. But while they're building that, they're building the long-term rails, if you will, to the future of what they're laying down with digital identification. I say all that as a parable to you this morning. Are you trying to solve the macro and not getting anywhere? Are you trying to be the best lawnmower in Central Florida? That's a great goal, and I want you to have that goal. But when you wake up today, what is the most tangible, unique, innovative problem you're solving that you can actually go affect right now? For us, it was building a links page for Spark Sites. For Spark Citizens and the Spark Nation in the Discord, I don't even want to get into it yet because I want to make sure that we're making progress down that road, but we'll be solving the most tangible problem. The most specific problem is people using this technology basically to also express their emotion. We're going to get into this more, but I encourage you today, think global, act local, have a very robust vision, but when you wake up day in and day out, I encourage you, what is the narrowest problem you can actually solve? Not hype, not hot air, not marketing, unless that marketing is just world building. Build out your world, paint a picture of the world you're trying to build for people, but get to the business of solving the single most tangible thing that is a real solution, a useful solution, a meaningful solution to you and your clients. And I think you're going to find you'll make more progress. A lot of people say that's not exponential growth grant. I encourage you another principle of Spark Nation is this. Don't chase exponential. It's like chasing the macro. You can't just chase exponential growth. You can't get asymmetric growth. But that's different. How do you create asymmetric growth? Incremental is exponential because no one else is working on incremental growth. They're all hoping, wishing, and hyping for that next level growth. But instead, they're not getting anything. It's just hot air. Today, work on the most tangible thing you can. And why am I encouraging you this way? Listen, if you want to talk about more stuff like this, if you want to get more traction in your ideas, more, if you want to help, if you want help in being launched, join us at the Discord, join us on the Patreon. But no matter what you do today, remember the mission, igniting lives of explosive significance, starting with your own. Have a great day.